God and to the angel of his house, Bishop Thomas and Pilgrim Press for opening up their doors and being so gracious to our family in this time. I thank God for my pastor, Reverend C.R. McDuffie, who has supported me. Pastor Black, Pastor Cotton, Pastor McGee, Pastor Pullen, Barnwell. A lot of these men, I grew up as a little boy watching them preach. And let me tell you the truth. They will do my grandma a lot probably better justice than me because they have been doing this for a long time. A lot of qualified preachers in the audience. Come on, preacher. A lot of men of God who will tear this poor kid up. But my grandmother asked me. You know, old me. An old nobody from South Phoenix. Grew up with ashy elbows. And for all my flaws, my faults, my failures, sometimes I disappointed her. Sometimes she had to cry over me and pray hard over me. Just little old me will stand and try to do justice to this great woman of God. If you want to know how I'm going to do it, it's because my soul is anchored, it's hooked up, and it's connected to the same thing that she was connected to. Hey, come on now. <laughs> Somebody ought to praise God for the life she lived, for the courage she had. I love my grandma. I see a lot of my family. I love her, and I know she loves me. But she didn't just love me. She loved all our grandkids. And we were good, bad children. I look at children nowadays, and they just bad. We were good and bad. We knew how to be good when the adults were around. We didn't cuss till they went in the house. <laughs> Running around with my cousin Shimon, and we knew how to be bad. And every now and then we get caught being bad. And the ladies and them would tell us to get a switch off the tree. And they would make you work to pick the cherries off the tree. Get the switch right and bring it in the house. And I thought about that. I wonder why. I got a whooping back then and I didn't understand. But when I grew older, I understood that they whooped me because they loved me. They corrected me. They didn't want me to go off to prison. They didn't want me to die off in these new streets. And so when I thought about what could I talk about to justify such a great life, God told me, you tell them about my love. And directed me to Romans, the eighth chapter. And we're going to stick a pen in verses 35. And we're going to read through the entire chapter, and I will be reading from the New International Version. And it simply reads this. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble, or hardship, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. Knowing all of these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, nor height nor death, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. For a few moments, I want to take your time to talk about in the footsteps of love. In the footsteps of love. Here in the eighth chapter, Paul talking to the Romans raises a good question. But what I love more than the question is his conclusion. You see, Paul asks the question, then he takes time to give the answer to his own question. He said, who shall separate us? from the love of God. Also to say what can separate us from the love of God. Because Paul figured this situation out, sometimes we lose money. We lose cars, we might lose our house, we might lose our loved ones and our friends. But you cannot lose the love that God has for you. Because the love God has for you is agape love, which is unconditional. And I thank God that his love is not based on performance. 
I thank God that his love is not based on my behavior. His love is unconditional and is undeserved. The Bible tells us that Christ loved us so much, but yet while we were sinners, he died for us. I thank God that he didn't fall in love with me. Many of us have settled in love in our life and now we can't stand that person. Because something happened to where we didn't love them anymore. Because I found out that if you can fall into something, you can also fall out. And I'm glad that God didn't fall in love with me. Because there were some times that I was unfaithful. There were some times that I was disobedient. There were some times that I came up short. And if he would have reacted to my actions, he would have fell out of love with me. But despite it all, God loved me anyhow. God is love. Don't the Bible tell you that God is love. And when you have the love of God in you, it will compel you to extend that love to other people. Even when we experience a difficult time. Sometimes it's hard to love us during difficult times. Because one minute we experience happiness, then the next we are swept into the depths of despair. Sometimes during our storms, our trials, our afflictions, we lose sight in the fact that God still loves us and expects us to love. You see, it's easy to play church. It's easy to love those who love you. It's easy to speak to folks who speak to you. It's easy to name it and claim it, fake it till you make it. It's easy to act like you're happy. It's easy to shout when money is in your pocket. But what about when trouble comes? When distress, when tribulation, when persecutions come? Can you still love or do it change your character? Just because you don't know how you don't pay your bills ain't a reason to cuss nobody out. You shouldn't change how you treat people because you don't know where your next meal is going to come from. But when you love like God loves, you love unconditionally. No matter what you're going through, you can be persuaded like Paul that I'm still connected to the Lord. In the footsteps of love, God expects us to walk into the footsteps that Christ also walked. And to the examples that Christ walked. Grandma understood this. Just because you're saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. That don't exempt you from trouble. If you live long enough, I don't care how big your Bible is, I don't care how big your cross is, if you live long enough, trouble will knock on your front door. And many times I see people in church and it seems like their heart ain't in it anymore. It seems like they're going through the motions. They lost their joy, their fire, their desire, their praise, their peace, their love. They come into the church and they're going through the motions. Because distress and tribulations have made their burdens seem heavier, their mountains seem higher, their nights much darker, their roads much rougher, and their problems much greater. Many people come to church, but they quench the spirit. They haven't rejected the Bible, but they don't read it. They haven't rejected prayer, but they don't pray. They come to the altar, but they take their burdens back with them. Their heart isn't in it. Come to church like the ten men, looking for a heart. Then they leave looking for love in all the wrong places. Oh, they gonna help me preach this thing. Because it's your child of God, you're going to have to learn how to love and serve. Maybe God is calling you to be a witness at your school. Maybe he's calling you to be a witness at your job. He's calling for you to do something, but many of us treat God like 911. Mm -hmm. Call him when you need him. You know you don't call 911 every day. <laughs> Only when you need help. All right. Or when you're in despair. But I found out normally folks treat God like a cell phone. You know, we got these high-tech cell phones now, and you can look and you can see who's calling you. And if you don't want to talk to them, there's an ignore button. You can hit the ignore button and send them straight to the voicemail. And many times, God has been calling on us. Yes. Calling on us to be better than what we are. Calling on us to love and to serve. And many of us hit the ignore button and send it to the voicemail with all the rest of the unchecked messages. But Jesus told his disciples, if you're going to walk down this road, it ain't going to be easy. You're going to get lied on sometimes. You might have to suffer sometimes. 
but I still want you to walk in the footsteps of love. Yeah, Grandma endured hardship, but she let her light shine and she had a praise through it all. She didn't complain that God was being unfair. She didn't just love and word, but by deed. She walked by faith and not by sight. And she had the mindset of Paul that there is nothing. Somebody say nothing. Nothing that can separate me from the love of God. Well, somebody said, what about dialysis? I, I told you already nothing. Somebody said cancer. Well, I already told you nothing.